Now time for members' statements, and I recognize the member for Hamilton Mountain. Uh, thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Today is World Autism Awareness and Acceptance Day. This year, I had the privilege of speaking with many autistic adults from an organization called Autistics for Autistics Ontario. A4A has shared with me the importance of really listening to the voices of autistic adults. In their view, provincial decision-making has excluded autistic people so far. When it comes to policy decisions, they say nothing about us without us. And you know what? They're right. We need to do a better job of including their voices. A for A members are also the reason I'm wearing this infinity symbol pin today. They taught me that this symbol is one of the preferred symbols of autism rights and neurodiversity movements. The basic premise of the neurodiversity movement is that neurological differences are like any other human difference. This movement does not see autism as a disease to be cured. Instead, it's just one of the ways that humans are wired. And so our job is to accommodate and to support people on the spectrum. There is a lot of wisdom in this approach. On World Autism Acceptance Day, I want to recognize the self-advocates for their work. Thank them for their work. Thank them for their courageous uh, stand in making sure that they're speaking out. And acknowledge that there is still work to do to ensure that people on the spectrum are supported. Thank you very much. Thank you. Member statements. Thank you, Bill. The member for Carleton. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. On Saturday, March 30th, I had the pleasure of accompanying the Minister of Children, Community and Social Services, as well as the Minister of Economic Development, Job Creation and Trade, alongside my colleague uh, MPP Roberts as we toured uh, the Bayview Yards. I want to thank Michael Tremblay, President and CEO of Invest Ottawa and Bayview Yards, for organizing a fantastic tour of their facilities. Bayview Yards is the ultimate one-stop shop and mashup of technical, business, and market capabilities, resources, and expertise that helps technology entrepreneurs and companies launch, grow, and thrive. And I particularly enjoyed riding in the driverless vehicle with Ministers McLeod and Smith and MPP Roberts. Afterwards, I had the pleasure of attending a roundtable on uh, immigration, both from the economic and from the, uh, the refugee and social side of things with both Ministers McLeod and Minister Smith. It was a fantastic roundtable. It was incredibly informative. It was a pleasure to be there to listen from members of the community. And I want to thank the ministers for including me in their tour. Uh, it was fantastic. And it's just great to see them there. And at the end of the day, Mr. Speaker, organizations like these are critical in helping to ensure that entrepreneurs get the support they need to help grow their businesses and create more jobs for Ontario workers. Our government for the people will continue to work with workers and business owners in order to make Ontario open for business. Thank you. Thank you. Member Statements, Member for Beaches East York. Thank you, Speaker. <clears throat> Today is uh, World Autism Awareness Day, and here in Ontario, we are watching the effects of the government's disastrous autism plan, which went into effect yesterday. After weeks of declaring that our plan was going to proceed unchanged on April 1st, the Minister of Children, Community and Social Services backed down and made some, after all, not enough, however, to prevent the plan wreaking havoc with the lives of affected families and not enough to prevent job losses. One of my constituents in Beaches East York has reached out to me in desperation. She's a board-certified behaviour analyst in Toronto, and her husband works in the same field. He's already lost his job as a result of the OAP changes, one that he'd held for over a decade, and she has reason to believe that hers may be in danger as well. In a matter of months, this couple has gone from a secure, stable future with good jobs that they both loved and that allowed them to start planning for a family to not knowing whether either of them will have an income a month from now. The minister's plan has devastated families like my constituents across the province, families with kids with autism who can't get the therapy they need, and families of therapists who suddenly don't have the good jobs they loved and counted on. We need an evidence-based, needs-based autism plan, no caps or age restrictions, and we need a government that consults with stakeholders before it acts and not after it has wreaked havoc on people's lives. Thank you very much. Member statements. The member for Northumberland, Peterborough South. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, ensuring the safety and security of the people is one of government's most fundamental responsibilities. In our community, I would like to thank all of the incredible first responders 
and the work they do on a daily basis. I would like to take this opportunity to highlight a very important roundtable we had with Public Safety and Correctional Services Minister Sylvia Jones a week ago to discuss the Comprehensive Ontario Police Services Act. I would like to thank Coburg Police Chief Kai Lu, Port Hope Police Chief Bryant Wood, OPP Detachment Commander Brian O'Halloran and former Commander Lisa Darling for joining us around the table alongside other members of the service, including their respective associations other frontline officers, special constables, and auxiliary members. Before the last election, Mr. Speaker, the previous government passed one of the most anti-police pieces of legislation in Canadian history. Our government made a commitment to restoring our relationship with the police officers and the important work they do on a day-to-day -day basis. New measures, Mr. Speaker, include enhanced oversight, increased fairness measures, and due process for officers, better governance, training, and transparency. Mr. Speaker, having done ride-alongs with the men and women of our frontline police services, I can tell you they serve with distinction. They're effective communicators, and they are integral members of our community. And I would like to give them a sincere thank you for the work they do on a day-to-day -day basis to keep our community safe. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. The member for Meskigawak, James Bay. Merci, Monsieur le Président. Ça fait plaisir de me lever aujourd'hui sur la Journée mondiale de sensibilisation à l'autisme. Les changements au programme ontarien de l'autisme auront une conséquence néfaste pour les familles francophones du nord de l'Ontario, une région dont de nombreux francophones sont plus élevés qu'ailleurs en province. J'ai parlé avec les parents francophones de, euh, de, que leurs enfants n'ont pas accès à des services français. Exemple. Their children do not have access to French services. Hers. Valérie in uh, Sudbury. She's a pretty little girl who was uh, diagnosed with severe autism. She has communication and understanding delays. She cannot talk because she needs intervention. She needs uh, 25 to 45 hours of therapy, which costs uh, 55 to 110,000 dollars a year. They have a fixed uh, income. There is, it's not an option to pay uh, for private therapies. Furthermore, there's a long uh, waiting list in the nor north, especially for francophone services. This woman is desperate. These people are ignored, and the, these children deserve the help from this government. We need to invest more, and we need to establish a program based on scientific approaches. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Member statements. The member for Markham Unionville. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. A few weeks ago, I joined our Minister of Health and Long-Term Care, Honourable Ms. Christine Elliott for a meeting with local healthcare service providers in York Region. We met with loved community services, complex care and seniors, community health services, South Lake Regional Health Centre, family and community medicine, and many more to discuss the state of our healthcare system and also the critical role that these local service providers play within the great healthcare system. Mr. Speaker, we have listened to health service providers, and we have heard that the current health care system serves the bureaucracy more than it does to the patient. Our Minister of Health and Long-Term Care has recently announced that there will be changes made to our system which will eliminate inefficiencies which disadvantage the patient. One of the ways in which this goal is said to be achieved by shifting funding and decision-making to local Ontario health teams. This will allow for more seamless transition when a patient is transferred to different facilities and specialists. A proper functioning health care system works for, not against, the patient. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Member Statements, the member for St. Catharines. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. 
Today, I rise to speak about Ontarians suffering with spinal muscular atrophy. This government who claims for the people can truly make a difference in the lives of those living with SMA. Ontarians living with SMA have dreams. They have aspirations, aspirations just like the rest of us here. However, their bodies become, are becoming weaker over time. SMA patients lose their motor skills and lung functions, although all along they are knowing that their bodies are failing every day without getting the proper treatment. Jared Wayland is a young man who lives in my riding in St. Catharines. Jared knows all too well the physical and psychological effects spinal muscular atrophy has. Jared played many sports, just like other young men of his age. Now diagnosed with SMA, he cannot physically move like he used to. SMA has confined Jared to a wheelchair. Speaker, Biogen's drug Spinanza, that is used in other provinces, is the only hope for people and patients with SMA. This miracle drug stops the disease from progressing. Spinanza, speranza can be the difference between life and death. No one should have to choose between the two. All life-saving medications should be readily available for Ontarians when they need them. Thus, I implore this government, the minister, to research to look into what steps are needed to, to provide to fund Speranza for SMA patients who need and want to utilize it. Thank you very much. Member statements, the member for Markham Stouffville. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, it gives me great pleasure uh, to rise today to uh, talk about uh, an event that happened last week in my riding. It, uh, I know many of the members have similar events. It was the Whitchurch Stovall Chamber of Commerce uh, uh, Small uh, well, Business Awards, Mr. Speaker. And we all talk about how important small businesses uh, or small, medium, and large job creators are to us. I just want to highlight a couple of the, the recipients uh, of the awards. The Small Business Award uh, went to the Trentadu Torres Real Estate Team. Now, Mr. Speaker, this is a very dynamic team. We have great realtors in my riding, but the work that this team has done to reach out to the community is second to none. The Large Business Award went to Finlayson Hospitality, Todd and Marcia Finlayson, who are the owners of not only the McDonald's in my riding, but a number of McDonald's across uh, York Region. They've donated uh, over $100,000 to our local McDonald's. Uh, or to our local Ronald McDonald homes at our hospital, Mr. Speaker. And also the special award uh, went to O'Neill's Funeral Home, Mr. Speaker. Now, O'Neill's Funeral Home is one of those places that has been in Stouffville for as long as anybody can remember. When you look at all the historical pictures of the founding of the town, O'Neill's was there. But what we learned was that O'Neill's uh, furniture store, what makes them unique was is that not only, uh, well, they're not a furniture store anymore, they're a funeral home. But they started off as a furniture store. So Originally, they did both. You could buy furniture, and if calamity <laughs> happened, you could get a casket and they would bury you. So just a special thank you to all of those small businesses who have done a great job, employ a lot of great people in the community, Mr. Speaker, here, here. and especially to the Chamber of Commerce that does such great work. Thank you. Thank you. Member Statements, the member from Mississauga Centre. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I am honoured to rise today in remembrance of a faith leader whose impact and legacy will live on forever. Fourteen years ago today, St. Pope John Paul II has left this earth to go to the House of the Father. That is why April 2nd is recognized and celebrated in Ontario and Canada as Pope John Paul II Day. October 16, 1978 was a day that many Poles around the world, including my grandmother, remember vividly that white smoke coming out of the Vatican chimney. It signaled that the Archbishop of Kraków, Cardinal Karol Wojtyła, was elected as Pope and leader of the Roman Catholic Church. He was the second longest serving Pope in modern history, leading the Catholic Church for 27 years. He is also recognized for his role in ushering in the end of communism in Poland. He is one of the world's most traveled leaders in history, having visited 129 countries. His love for people, and especially youth, transcended religious and racial boundaries, earning him the title of the People's Pope. As a Canadian and of Polish descent, I am honoured to have the opportunity to commemorate an individual who made such a profound impact on the world. He was Poland's gift to the world. One of St. 
John Paul II's most notable contributions to the Catholic faith was the addition of five new mysteries of the Rosary. Mr. Speaker, to commemorate the 14th anniversary of his passing, I would like to recite the Hail Mary and ask my fellow members to join me if they wish to do so. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, praise for us sinners, now and in the hour of our death. Amen. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you very much.